A few hours ago, I was clutching four bottles of pills in my hands. They were antidepressants and pain pills, ones that I've spent the last year socking up on. At one point, I uncapped a bottle and poured the whole contents into my palm. For twenty minutes, I didn't do anything but stare at them, rolling the tablets back and forth in my hand. But eventually I put the pills back in their bottle and went to 4chan's advice page. I made a post asking if overdosing on antidepressants was an effective way to die. I asked if it was quick and painless, or if it would wind up causing me to suffer. I got about 20 replies from people calling me pathetic, weak, spineless, saying that I was attention-seeking and that if I really wanted to die, then I would just do it and quit being a pussy about it. But then, someone linked me to a forum website. The site showcased unfiltered, uncensored discussions of suicide. Some of the posts were from people who offhandedly thought about killing themselves every once in a while, and others were from people who had full, concrete plans with a timeline and everything. Some people were planning to do it in a few months from now, and others as soon as tomorrow night. After an hour of using the site, I came out of it with a deep knowledge of efficient, ideal methods of suicide, ones that had a low chance of causing pain or discomfort for me. I also learned about drugs to take beforehand in order to reduce your survival instinct, and I learned that many of the supplies needed for these attempts were just a few clicks away on Amazon. I'm now typing this several hours after finding the suicide site. I'm lying in bed, in the dark, in a dirty room that I know I'll have to clean eventually. My skin is dry, and I have a heavy migraine, and I can feel my pulse beating in my temple. On the website's description page, it argued that suicide is a moral, ethical right of all consenting adults to partake in, as long as they're in a, quote, rational, non-impulsive state of mind. But that's the problem, isn't it? Most people who are driven to suicide aren't in a rational state of mind at all. They're not calmly weighing out their options or talking with people in their life to get a second opinion. Most people who find themselves at this point are in a manic, extremely impulsive, extremely vulnerable state of mind. They don't share their thoughts with the loved ones or medical professionals. They keep it bottled up inside where it can fester for weeks or days or even just a few hours. Sometimes all it takes is just a few hours. What makes suicide so dangerous is that when you're in a suicidal mind state, you're not in full control of your thoughts. You aren't thinking clearly because you can't think clearly. You aren't capable of stepping away from your situation and looking at it with a rational gaze. You're trapped in your own mind, and your mind is such a dangerous, devastating place that being stuck there might as well be a death sentence in and of itself. That website taught me how to kill myself. It gave me practical, sound advice, resources to read up on for more information, and links for where to buy the items that I'd need. And that means that I now have to carry this knowledge with me. The knowledge that, if I really want to die, I'm capable of doing it at any given moment. But I don't think I really want to die. I mean, it's just like the 4 said, right? If I really wanted to go, then I wouldn't be spending this much time searching for the most painless, peaceful method I could find. I would just shoot myself or jump in front of a train or something. If I really wanted to die... I wouldn't have put my pills down when they were in my hand. I would have swallowed them all in one go. If I really wanted to kill myself, I would have done it by now. But since I haven't, that means I don't really want to, right? That's what I've been telling myself these last couple of hours. But the reality for me, and I believe the reality for most suicide victims, is that the first thoughts of suicide are almost never the only thoughts. The first failed attempt is almost never the only attempt. Suicidality is like a wave. It slowly ebbs and flows, forwards and back, sometimes so softly that you barely even notice the tides changing. And if you do survive the first wave, you feel a sense of strength. You feel victorious, even. But that victory isn't enough to brace you for the second wave, or the third or the fourth. Usually, what winds up happening is that you feel so beaten and worn out by the first few waves that your body just can't keep up anymore. By the time the fifth wave comes, you're so exhausted that you resign yourself to it. 
you give in. Because you can't keep fighting anymore. That's what makes suicide so dangerous. Because the first episode, you might be strong enough to fight through it. But the more episodes you endure, the weaker you become. The weaker your mind becomes. Until eventually, your mind just can't fight against it any longer. I don't think I want to die. Dying scares me a lot. It's actually one of my biggest fears. But I also don't think that really matters anymore. In the last year alone, I've clutched those pills in my hand at least seven different times. I've pressed a butcher knife up against my throat. I've walked on the edge of roads during heavy traffic instead of taking the sidewalk. I've traveled to local bridges and dangled my feet off the edge. My fear of death is great. But its hold on me is getting weaker and weaker as each day passes by. <laughs>